what's up everybody welcome back i'm really hoping that i have audio right now because you guys know i am like infamous for having fucking audio problems oops cuss word first cuss word of the night sorry about that i guess it's better to be me to say the first cuss word of the night of the evening than it is to be this guy ayo my special guest tonight, P Dubs Arcade Loft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're having a round table therapy uh, session tonight for content creators, for those of us who have survived. Oh no, dude! Wait. Oh, this no. is this is why. There we go. There we go. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, you can hear me now, guys. Mic it, check. Mic check. It had to be one thing. It had to be one audio thing. All right. Let's see if they hold on because there's a delay in the chat. All right. Ba yeah. uh, Jason says, "Bam." Okay, audio's back. All right. So the way I started it was, <laughs> guys, my name is Patrick, and I'm a survivor of home arcade community. So that's how we need to start all these uh, shows from now on. <laughs> you know yep oh so, my god thanks for I've, having me on i greatly appreciate it i've been in a home arcade community for two years i've been in there twice as long what you know what four years. once you're once you're affiliated with the home arcade community it you can never shake it off like you'll always be affiliated with it you know what i mean yeah yeah there are there have been people that have pivoted completely from this space and when they go to a convention or something they'll be hey that guy that's the one up guy you know or that's yeah. the one up gal you know what i mean like like because that's where a lot of people got their start you know and the, a lot of us in this group of uh sorry souls that make content about home arcade stuff <laughs> yeah you know yeah yeah like i could be oh my god did i wait hold on Guaranteed i'm losing i'll go to convention and someone come up and be oh you're back uh-oh no you're good I bet I could. Uh, I bet I could go to a convention. Like I could. Like let's just say I start covering. I don't know. I'll start covering cell phones. I'll become a cell phone channel. I guarantee you, a year from now, I'll go to a convention. So I'm be like, aren't you the at games guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Because they've seen an abundance of at games videos. So, yeah. yeah. You are an at games shill, aren't you? You shill. <laughs> well, I. Well, I was. I mean. Oh, not, were you not, really? Not so much anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Well, I was a big fan. Like, uh, Arcade One Up was never nice to me. I mean, I liked mm -hmm. their products, but the people were dicks, and the people they worked with were dicks. And then we turn around, and uh, you know, At Games was coming out with the Legends Ultimate, and it really piqued my interest because now I could have one machine that does it all, right? So I got yeah. super, I got super excited about it, and I covered it a bunch, free willingly, of course. Um, some people out there said, oh, he's a shill. I'm like, well, if someone makes a lot of content about products they like, if you think that makes them a shill, then I guess I'm a shill, but you know. Well, that's the thing in the home arcade. If you cover any home arcade products, you are a shill for that company. Yeah. 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 If you like it, you're a shill. If you, right. if you don't like it, you're, you're a hater. There's no in between. Right No. And I, and, and I've tried to, I, I've tried over the years to. You know, we all learn and grow. I mean, now I've been doing YouTube for years. I've kind of learned, like, if you're more just like you stick down the middle, try not to show any favoritism, but just try to back up what you say with, like, facts and good points. Yeah. Uh, usually people trust you, right? And your yeah. channel will grow. And my channel yeah. has grown uh, quite well considering the, the, the niche that we cover, you know, um, you know, there's not a lot of audience to pull. Okay, I didn't. Uh, I didn't invite you on here to rub the size of your channel on my face. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, there's not a lot. Of, there's not a big audience for you to pull from if you only cover like these certain blend of. Products, oh yeah, right? yeah. Like, no, you really, I, I agree. You're, like you're... you'll notice you've, you've been making a lot of content about like Ambernix lately and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that's bringing new eyes to your channel, right? You have to expand yeah. your. And, and new weird community niche problems. Like if you look in my last video about the Retroid Pocket, there's like this fanboy argument going on between, it's it's almost like a 30 comment string, sub string. And they're like, oh, this is trash. It's, it's not as good as Ambernick. 
and then it's like, oh, this guy, he's from this. He's he commented on every video. It's hilarious. Um, yeah, okay. there are there are shills for or not shills fanboys for everything. Oh you yeah, know what I mean, like oh, yeah. I put I put out my video today about the Pepsi USB hub, and I'm sure I'll get comments from some Pepsi haters like, "This is disgusting. You should have Coke is better." I need you to know, compile just... like some of my best comments and do a stream about it one day, like best you know fanboy hater yeah. comments. Well, I've always wanted to do that. It's like what Jimmy Kimmel or Jimmy Fallon do, where they read mean tweets. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It'd be it'd be it'd be great to make a video, and you're like reading mean comments. In fact, a lot of YouTubers have made that video, and those videos actually perform very well. But here's the problem with that, Jade, is if you make a video promoting bad comments, I think it'll just lead to more bad comments coming on your video. But you know what? That's those... more interaction on your channel. Therefore, That's true, drawing that more the... from the <laughs> algorithm. True, but is that the interaction I want? I'd rather talk to people who are like, great review, P-dubs, uh, I like this product, or P-dubs, I disagree with you, this product sucks, and here's why. I like having those comments in my yeah, comment yeah. sections. Well, no, I mean, you know I, I mean, I agree. Yeah, those are the ones that you're going to interact with, not, you know, not the, yeah. the super ignorant ones. But let me say hi to the chat real quick. Let's say hi to the chat. Yeah. All right, up at the very first top, we got... Um, uh, Menta Messiah one uh, uh Messiah oneness gaming, um and I always like struggle to say that right because it's oneness um get it like oneness mm. Messiah oneness gaming, uh hello hello hello, and Scott J, good luck tonight lots to cover there is we have a lot to cover oh my god <laughs> I'm nervous now <laughs> Danzy. <laughs> They got the show notes already? Did they leak? <laughs> they leaked on Reddit. <laughs> JJ uh, says, Hi, Jade and P-Dubs. Both of you are in my top five list of content creators. I love the fact that you leave politics, sex, religion, and other personal stuff out and focus on the hobby and set. Yeah, I would say that's more true for, for Patrick. I probably am a 10, 10 percenter on that one <laughs> where I have streams where I don't leave those out, but only because I'm forced yeah. to. All right. Damn it. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Richo, Richo Dello, yeah. let's do this. Brooklyn Menace cheers. Adam Kolb uh, says, oh, Jason, hope your family is well. And Lil Alien, Jason, hey, hi. Thanks for hanging out. Um, and D -D 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 David N, hello. Bono's Tecmo, my other mod. Bo, Bobo, hi Bo. And uh, Paul, Paul better show up in here tonight. Paul Bears, he better be in here tonight. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's see, Giovanni, Sean, ooh, says ooh. Um, do 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 do. Co wait, Connell, zero one. Hey, sure, this will be an awesome show. Love collaboration between content creators. Yes, yes, me too. Twisted Gaming TV in the house. What up? What up? Uh, Goofy Foot. It's the key master. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. There is no, wait, there is no Dana, only Zool. There is no data, only Zool. We didn't get a chance to see Ghostbusters today, but we're going to go tomorrow. So hopefully, hopefully it's good. Yeah. Don't spoil it, live chat. Do not spoil it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, don't look at the chat anymore. Uh, okay. Uh, damage control. Damage control. What's up? What's up? Retro lizards in here. Joel. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Who else? Quentin. I can't say your last name, but good evening. Um, Bobby. Stardust. Cybersiles. Uh, Miss Line and the Dubs. What's up? Smart. Andy's Game Room. Ezekiel, of course, thank you for the super chat. Hey, what's up, Jade? And my Chicago brother, Air Dubs. Is that like an inside thing, yeah. Air Dubs? Okay. Air Dubs, Air, Air Jordan, Chicago. Thank you, Ezekiel, um, for the super chat and for stopping by. Steve Sale, good evening to both of you. Uh, Office Arcade, zero cool. Office Arcade. Yeah. I I'm, love Office Arcade. I haven't seen Office Arcade in a while. But he always pops yeah. in and it's like a nice surprise. Kappa Jones yep. and Retro Lab Rat. So what's up, everybody? Thank you, thank you for hanging out. Um, and now, now that we've done that, 
I feel like it's it's time to get serious, Patrick. Yep. Oh, our, so on tonight's episode, we're going to crap all over the community. No, I'm just kidding. We, uh, <laughs> we, 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 we actually have some pretty cool stuff that uh, we were talking about earlier on the phone. And we're like, wait a minute, we, we got to save this for the show because th these are great topics. So hopefully you guys will enjoy some of the modding topics we, uh, we want to talk about later. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The show. Uh, you know, on the note of the the whole Ambernick thing, before we we go into sure. like some of the legacy stuff, I want to ask you: Have you have you gotten any of these, like any of these things? Yeah, I have. Uh, I have a couple of Ambernicks. Uh, mm -hmm. Not many. I only buy like one uh, one every other year. Like I, I, I didn't want to turn myself into you know a handheld channel. Yeah. And also, they they come out with these they come out with these things so frequently. Yeah, that about, I can't about keep every up like with them. And, and, six months or so, three to six yeah, months maybe. Right, I think it's more like three months. Like every, and I don't want to like keep spending like giving Amber Nick like two, you know, anywhere from a hundred to three hundred dollars every couple of months. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they're not like an ex-wife. You know what I mean? Like, um, <laughs> but whenever I do pick them up, I love them. I'll put. They want to be your ex-wife though. Like this is the uh, this is the RG thirty five XX. This is a really nice one. I like this one. Yeah. Um. This is the light, most recent one I just picked up, and I got it because it looks like a Game Boy. You know what I mean? And it, it plays really, really well. Yeah. The other one I had, the wood grain one, my son stole it. It's in his bedroom. I haven't seen it in like a year and a half. So nice. You know, I'll never see it again. He plays his Game Boy games on it. I think I did a giveaway with my wood grain one, um, but I have the 35XX and then I have, um, well, I really just have the Retroid Pocket because uh, the Pocket 4 Pro mm -hmm. is so freaking powerful that mm -hmm. you can play like everything on it. And, and what I really wanted to be able to do was play like Saturn games. Um, so you can definitely do that with with the uh, Pocket 4 Pro. But anyways, it's really cool. And they're supposed to be making a dock for the Pocket 4 Pro. So like a, almost like a switch dock so that you can just like plug it in and then you can play it on your TV with like a Bluetooth controller. So I thought that was cool, too. Yeah, yeah. I love it when these handhelds come out with a dock. I think that's that's a fantastic way to go about it. So, yeah, yeah that's great. Definitely portability and consolization in the in the same way. Uh, what is it? Same? No, cup of tea. That's not the right word. I don't know, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, where you time? You know, shut up. Okay. Shh. <laughs> you tell you tell people to shut up a lot, Jade. I'm really telling. I'm huh. really telling myself to shut up, though. I don't know if you noticed that. It's actually me. Uh, okay, so Paul's here. We can start the show. Paul, oh, right? Paul, finally, God. We we're waiting for you, Paul. <laughs> um. Okay. So let's see, uh, what is, where do we want to start? I want to start with, with, um, your console legacy. Cause I love asking people this when they come on my show. Uh, and I don't mean like money shot. Um, but <laughs> wait, what kind of show is this? I'm sorry. I'm silly. Okay. Uh, but what, what was your favorite console when, when you were like between eight to let's say 14, what was like your favorite console? Cause that was kind of like the prime time. Okay. So I have to, I don't know if I'm going to have my dates right here. Let's see here. So when I was five, we got the NES and that was technically my first console was the NES. My dad brought that home uh, for me and my sisters and uh, hooked it up to a black and white 13 inch television and we had a playroom in our house yeah so this was the room where all the damn toys were we're talking like all my ninja turtles he-man stuff you know what i mean like all my action figures all my all my sister's toys all their little barbie dolls and stuff we had this massive room in, in our house that was the what they called the playroom because mm -hmm. my parents didn't want this stuff all over the place right, right. so my dad buys the nes and of course he didn't want to hook it up to we had like one of those Zenith TVs that had like one of the brown, you know, they looked like furniture. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm talking yeah. about? So he didn't want to hook it up to the main TV because he didn't want us to disturb him watching TV. Right. So he bought a shit 13 inch black and white TV and hooked it up in in that playroom. And that's where I played NES like crazy is playing. You never you know, you know, you really love Super Mario Brothers if you're playing it in black and white. You right. Know what I mean? and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. 
And then, uh, but eventually we ended up uh, hooking it up to a color TV. But, but uh, so, but I think probably. So after the uh, after the NES, uh, I had Super Nintendo like everyone else. But then I switched over to Sega. Became a massive Sega fan. Mm. So, so now I'm thinking between like eight and eleven, I was probably playing the Sega, the Sega 32X when that came out. Loved Sega. I was on Team Sega all the way. Um, later on, uh, I had the PlayStation One. So now we're thinking teenage years. Yeah. Yeah, and PlayStation 1 I was obsessed with. I had hundreds of games. I played it like crazy. Hundreds then, of games? Yeah, I had so many of those discs. You have no idea. I used to play that thing all the time. Um, but then after after that, I didn't really get into like the PS2, PS3, PS4. I switched to Xbox. Mm. And then I was now I was an, I went from PS1 to like Xbox. And so now I'm like Xbox, OG Xbox, then I had the 360 until I got the red ring of death. And then um, eventually I got an Xbox one, Xbox one S or whatever. Now we have the series X, you know what I mean? But yeah, the PlayStation five I have now, and it's like my first PlayStation. That's like kind of mine after I became a parent, you know, uh, we got my son a PlayStation three and eventually a PlayStation four, but mm. those were always in his bedroom. I never saw him. I never got to touch him. And he always played those, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I feel kind of bad because growing up, I got to play on some really cool consoles and I got to play a ton of the classic games that we all know and love. But I didn't get to experience some of the ones that were more on the sides that, you know, a lot of other people did. A lot of other people got to experience like um, the Ataris. Like I missed out on the Atari era, right? I missed out on uh, TurboGrafx-16, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't really discover those games until I started tinkering around with emulation because it was all about Nintendo and Sega, then Sony, then Xbox, then Sony and Xbox. You know what I mean? Like, that's Yeah, that's like crazy. That's crazy that you missed the Atari era, though, because you're, I mean, yeah. I'm pretty sure you and me are, like, really close in age. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm 42, so, you know, um, yeah, so... But, you know, so, yeah, the Commodore, um, I see David put that in the live chat, like a lot of that stuff I never yeah. got to tinker with. You know, we just had the NES growing up for a long time until we got the other stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, let chat, let us know your um, your major system, like because I feel like that era from eight to 14, eight to 16 is like where mm -hmm. most of us experienced like the yeah. the the console that kind of solidified you know our console mm -hmm. gaming experience so to speak um but yeah yeah share it in the chat and you know whatever we're talking about tonight like feel free to just drop it in the chat and and uh let us know um but yeah, yeah that's I was I was definitely a Sega kid too. Um I I had an NES and a Game Boy. I was like hugely into Game Boy when I was in elementary school. And I, I think I've told this story mm -hmm. like a million times on my stream, but long story short, I would take my Game Boy to school when I first got it in I think 89. And um, and then in 90, I would take it to school, you know, right after Christmas break and play other kids mm -hmm. linked up on Tetris. And it was just, it was so fun. Um, and everybody yeah. would sit at the lunch tables and kind of like circle around and, you know, we'd be playing yeah. Tetris. That's the joy of having friends growing up where friends own a ton of video games and you don't, but you're over there enough. It kind of feels like it's yours, right? So, like, we used to always play at my buddy Tom's house. He had the 3DO, and we would play Wing Commander, uh, was that, Wrath of the Tiger, the one that had, like, Mark Hamill and all those guys, uh, the guy who played Sala and in Indiana Jones. It was, like, a movie space game. Right. Uh, the original Need for Speed was on 3DO. We used to play that yeah. like crazy. Oh my god! On the 3DO, we used to play. We would just want to fly and do jumps and crash the cars. Like, yeah, we were just having a blast. Um, and then he also had the Atari Jaguar and uh, the Alien vs Predator game on the Jaguar is an incredible mm, game, and we, we played the holy hell out of it. So, I mean, luckily my friends had some of the consoles that I never had, and I got to play some of the games, but. Dude, there's so many great consoles I feel like I missed out on. Like when I buy these mini consoles, mm. you know how they've all come back in a mini form? Yeah. And you're like, I got the TurboGrafx-16, what is that, TurboGrafx-16 mini, and I love it. I think it's an incredible mini console. The yeah. games are so fun. 
It's crazy. I so Turbo Graphics was actually one of the ones that, as a kid, I remember seeing it at. Um, God, Sam's Club used to be called Pace, where I live, like P A C E. Um, and anyways, so when it was still Pace, they had like one of those big giant TVs. You know, if you go and went went into stores like that when you were younger, and but it was like a you know a tube TV, but like a flat screen, I guess. Anyways, it was huge, but they had a Turbo Graphics hooked up to one, and then the other one had an NES. Um, and I just remember seeing, I think it was like Keith Courage or Bonks for the first time, and I was like, oh, Bonks. dear Bonks. God, what is this machine? And um, <laughs> I was like so blown away because it was during the 8-bit you know, era or whatever, so I'd never really seen graphics like that. And then um, you know, after that, I started seeing like Sega Genesis and and all these other systems. But I can remember as a kid seeing, touching, or playing every single generation of console that came out, whether it was at only at an electronics store or whatever. I actually ended yeah. up owning a, a TurboGrafx-16 a couple years later when they were like clearancing them out. Yeah. Um, but I, I, yeah, I'm kind of lucky in that respect, just that I got to actually like put my hands on everything, like the Sega Mark III or, um, what is it master system um and all those other like kind of obscure ones that that people yeah. glaze over or whatever yeah. um what do we have what do we have going on in the chat here let's see mens is here he woke up late hi thank you for coming um <laughs> uh let's see yeah oh wow our chat we're the chat yeah. is like just really going tonight sega lots of sega fans in here um some sega NES was fans. great yeah i was obsessed with my sega and one game in particular eternal champions i am such a fan of eternal champions really i you, love eternal have champions. you played the sega cd version no no just the just the og one i remember that when i started my youtube channel we did an episode of the Loft Report where we were, it was a Sega episode. We were talking about the best of Sega, me and Detroit love. And it's amazing how YouTube videos travel. I'm a nobody. I had like, what, three, 400 subs. Mm -hmm. And I had the guy who created Eternal Champions reach out to me. He's like, hey, I saw your podcast show where you guys were talking about Eternal Champions. I'm the one who created it. I'm going to send you, he sent me the PDF files, PDF files of original artwork uh oh, wow the, like the whole his like the the game he created in writing like mm -hmm. it, it's like it's literally it's like this thick it's like 80 pages it's got it's got artwork um for the backgrounds for the characters like all the different variants they went through before they came to like the final versions the whole history of the game and all that and then i asked the guy i was like this is awesome hey Thanks for sending this to me. And I still have it saved on my PC. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you want to come on the show and talk about it? And he said, no, he goes, I don't do, I don't do any interviews, but whenever I see anybody talking about my game, I'll send them this stuff if they want to, if they want to have it. Yeah. That's really but man. Cool. I, w I wish I could have got him on, but he's like one of those people that just doesn't want to be on social media. The guy who created eternal champions. I don't blame him. Um, yeah, but it, it, the concept art and everything is, it's incredible. I'll forward it to you and you can take a look at it. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think you should do that. I think you should play the Sega CD version on like a live stream sometime and check I it should. out. Cause I bet I like the, the differences are kind of subtle, but it's, I mean, it's cool. You know, it's, it, it, it would be like playing, you know, Mortal Kombat on Sega CD versus the, mm -hmm the original sega genesis version so on the cartridge yeah. right right um yeah but anyways yeah uh, that was that was one of the really cool things that i never got uh, i played but i never got as a kid was the sega cd add-on um i i actually i didn't even get like a 32x i only ever had the uh the genesis i had the i had the sega cd add-on i had the whole tower of power and there's one Sega CD game that I absolutely love that everybody hates, and that's the Bram Stoker's Dracula game. Like oh, yeah. I just based on the movie, the good uh -huh. movie, the one that you right. know, Keanu Gary, Reeves. Gary and, Oldman, Keanu Reeves, yeah. You know, very young Winona Ryder. So good. Um, 
such a good effing movie. That movie still holds up today. I can still watch it that. It does. It does. But I love the movie growing up, and I love the Sega CD game. And that game, a lot of people say it's like one of the worst Sega CD games, but I freaking loved it. You know what I mean? I play it through all the time. So yeah. Yeah, I just I just liked it because I I think I liked the movie so much. Oh um, yeah. At, like think, the cinematography think... alone in that movie is just incredible. You know, I mean, like you said, it just yeah. it holds up really well even today to today's standards. Yep, yep. Um, okay, well, let's. Okay, so let me ask you the same question, but with arcades. What was your your earliest experience in the arcade? First arcade game that you remember playing, and then like your favorite time frame in the arcade. <sighs> So, yeah, when I was younger living in Illinois, we actually had an arcade. It was called Galaxy World in uh, the West Suburbs. And uh, it was like the only place near the house where we lived uh, that had real arcade games, real pinball machines. Plus, it was a bowling alley. Um, And it was a massive center. It was huge. Mm -hmm. Um, And in there, they had the real machines. And it wasn't like... They had a lot of cool stuff. Again, they had like a, a, some pinball machines in there, not a ton of them, but like they had that Super Mario Brothers Mushroom World, which I own today. Um, that was probably the first pin, real pinball game that I ever played. And that game means a lot to me, which is why when I got older and got money, I was like, I'm going to track that down. And I did, and I have it. And it's still downstairs. I'll never get rid of it. Yeah, that's cool. Um, you know, I, like everyone else, I was, you know, trying out the Pac-Mans and the Galagas and stuff. Uh, but I just, I fell in love with the Qbert they had there. Like, Qbert, Qbert's my jam, you know? Am I the world's greatest Qbert player? No, but I just, I love the character. I love the concept. I love the game. I love the artwork. I love the fact that this little orange guy curses whenever something bad happens, you know? It's <laughs> hilarious. And now I own a real Qbert, you know what I mean? So... Eventually, they converted that Galaxy World. It turned into, uh, you've heard of Brunswick Bowling? Oh, yeah, yeah. So Brunswick went around, and they they expanded, and they would buy up existing bowling alleys, right? And mm-hmm. they would convert them into a Brunswick. So Galaxy World went away. The bowling alley turned into, a, the bowling alley half of the building turned into a Brunswick. But then the arcade half, like, all of a sudden, you started noticing like they had like the street fighters there they had the mortal comets there you notice those started disappearing Mm -hmm. and because now the arcade portion was run by brunswick and instead of it being those kind of games they were being replaced with like redemption and claw machines like you know the stuff that makes more money you know what i mean like like they like all quarter, quarter eating shit Right. Like all the cool stuff went away, like all the cool stuff started going away and it just turned into like all the like like they had the original Killer Instinct in there, like all this stuff like disappeared. Um, But and then it, and now and then eventually when Brunswick went out of business in, in that part of the state there, they uh, it got bought out by like a Lowe's. You know how like a Lowe's gas stations are massive oh, for like is, semi trucks. This, this is getting depressing now. Yeah. Yeah. So now the arcade I I grew up in that I loved and we went to like, especially as teenagers, we went there every weekend because we'd go play in the arcade and we would go cosmic bowling. You know what I mean? Like that was that was high school for me and my friends. Um, And they also had the pool table. They had billiards room like we would do all that stuff every weekend. It was we're going to play pool. We're going to. We're going to uh, we're going to do cosmic bowling. We're going to play in a bunch of the arcades like. Once that place shut down, it, it got converted into like a Lowe's Super Center gas station. You know what I mean? Like yeah. semi trucks, because it's a massive. It was a massive building, and you know those Lowe's gas stations are huge, so they needed they needed a big spot. So, yeah. Wow. But yeah, so that's yeah, that's kind of that's kind of like the main the main place I went to growing up. Besides your typical like Chuck E. Cheese or Showbiz Pizza we had in Chicago when I was younger, before they eventually turned into Chuck E. Cheese. Went to a few Showbiz Showbiz Pizzas with like my mom and dad, but my dad was always like, "Let's get out of here as soon as possible." So you, know you, I mean? you got to play the four player games, right? You got that experience, like the TMNTs and all that. Yeah, yeah, here and there, here and there. Oh, you know, okay. if they were there. Yeah, I remember so. when that four player TMNT came out. Oh, my God. Like our Aladdin's castle. It was like get in line to play the game. And it was oh. like every time it was like the whole group of four people or at least three of them yes. would be play the, you know, the game the whole way through <laughs> and everybody would be watching it and then oh. they'd be done. They'd leave. 
and then the next group would kind of start and people would start crowding around again it was it's crazy good times yeah um, i said lows i meant loves you know what i mean the loves trucking stations the loves truck you'll see them like if you're ever on, on on a road trip driving down the expressway the giant gas stations yeah so, um yeah there was an aladdin's castle in lombard illinois that we went to a bunch and uh that place was fun um they had like one of those really nasty ball pits you know what i'm talking about oh well, like, yeah <laughs> the yeah. ones you don't want to go in right <laughs> yeah there's like uh yeah not it's not a good place to uh, who knows to end what up. bodily fluids yeah. are are on those plastic balls right or needles yeah things like that come out there with all kinds of stuff on you um yeah, yeah that's uh okay wait so what was your first game like the first arcade game you ever remember playing ever i mean that's hard to that's hard to remember i mean come i'm pretty on. sure i'm I mean, we're talking, we're, I was young. I mean, we're talking, it's got to be, you know, I honestly can't remember the first one I put hands on. You're, this but, is going to rack your brain even when you're off the yeah, show now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if my parents were still alive, I'd call and ask them. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, that was depressing. This went to a dark place. <laughs> like, I honestly don't know. Like, I know the first pinball machine I ever played was the Mario Brothers one. Oh, okay. But, yeah. And I know eventually I discovered Kubert and fell in love with it at that same arcade, but well, we'll, I can't tell you. We'll exactly put it on hold. Leave it in the back of your mind, you know, yeah. if, if you think about it. Um, yeah, I'll have to think. Yeah. So, okay. So we'll kind of like migrate, I guess, to the, to the whole home arcade thing. Um, okay. You ventured into the home arcade and like, what 2019 ish 20 uh 2019 yeah 2019 I okay think. yeah back when it was beginning to flourish it was a flourishing eden of before before the dark times <laughs> yeah before the empire <laughs> it, yeah it was uh <laughs> it was uh like the the garden of eden right and um, we, we were all having to, you got to admit it, guys, if you've been around here as long as we have, we were having fun back then. Yeah, you know, it was it was all about having a good time. I I remember when I got my, you know, shark first shark fin arcade went up and it was a Street Fighter one and I got it for real cheap. It didn't come with a riser or anything. And it, it was just really cute. And I thought these are really neat, you know, for 150 or whatever it was. I don't know. I got it for cheap. And I'm like, they're really cute. Um, mm -hmm. And I had a multicade in my garage that was basically built like after a, a, an HS5 with a, um, a CRT in it. And I've, I've had that thing for, I had had that thing forever. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'd always like, you know, had a place for arcades in my, in my heart. But it was just cool. Like the, the concept, the idea, it was like, it was neat. You could do something with it, you know, and my, and my kids loved it and they were really little at the time. So it was like, for them, they're like, Oh, cool. It's a mini arcade, you know? Um, but I remember going on YouTube, you know, looking to see what people were doing with these things or, and seeing some of the community and like some of those videos, um, but not at all being anywhere near being on YouTube yet. Mm -hmm. Um, and just being, interested in, in what was going on but i can remember um seeing some of the streams and stuff and and you know people were just having a good time in some in the videos and stuff like that and it, it was definitely a different dynamic um when it first started out because it was new and exciting and then COVID hit and it made it like something it gave everybody something to do you know i mean being on youtube in general it was like something to do and it brought people together during that time yeah yeah i agree i agree like um you know i had moved uh from chicago to arizona uh, for my job my company transferred me got a great opportunity out here so what happens when you move guys you leave all your friends behind i had a big social circle in chicago because i lived there for 30 plus years and all of a sudden i move out here and we had no family out here no friends so it's just me, the wife, and the kid hanging out together, right? And then eventually he's going to school. He's making friends. So now he's going to do stuff. But my wife and I, Melissa, we're just, you know, we're just kind of like going to work and then hanging out with each other, right? Like we're not really making a lot of friends. So like, you know, 
between that, we were becoming more homebodies, if you will. And then COVID started happening, right? And and then you you didn't want to leave the house. But I've told this story a bunch on my channel. One day we were walking through Walmart and uh, we saw the, uh, what was it? The, the Street Fighter 2 arcade went up. The original Shark Fin Generation 1 on like an end cap in the aisle. And I looked at it and I thought, hey, that's pretty cool. Like, look at that. It's a little mini arcade. You can put that in your house, right? And she could tell I was interested in it, and she went and bought it for me that Father's Day, right? So um, so then I had that, and then after I built it and was playing with it, I liked it. I went back, and then I they had uh, the Mortal Kombat. So then I had Mortal Kombat. So now I had two of them. And then I started searching the internet for like information about the arcades, like how to mod them and stuff and came across ETA primes video mm-hmm. and stuff. And, uh, and then I discovered Glenn's retro show and uh cool toy and a few other guys, RGT 85 who were talking about the machines back then. Right. And at that point I wasn't, I still wasn't doing YouTube until, so we're talking, this is June of 2019. So then all of a sudden, Six months later, I got a pretty big collection of stuff. And so in December of 2019, and also joining the Facebook groups, you're, you're, it's like, cool, but we got someone to talk to, people that actually enjoy the same stuff as us, right? Mm. And we're all stuck in home, right? So then December, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start throwing up some YouTube videos like all these other people that I'm following. And uh, sure enough, uh, I started making videos just about game room decor, right? And the channel was actually doing pretty well. Considering I was just talking about signs and decorations and whatchamacallit. And then I decided, you know, I'm just going to make, since I'm buying these machines, I'm going to start making content about these machines. And then it just kind of took off from there. So, yeah. Uh, real yeah. quick. Uh, thank you, um, Jason, Little Alien. Yeah. Uh, gifting yeah. memberships. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, awesome. wor- worst Jago just shows up here to get free memberships because every time he gets gifted a free membership. I see you, Jago. I see you. Yeah. Um, uh, but let's see. What, what was the other one that I saw in here? Um, oh, Ballistic Coffee Boy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that comment. I appreciate that. He says, hello, Sheline Gaming, P-Dubs Arcade Loft. Loving this. Thank you both for what you bring to the community. Appreciate yeah. that. Um, Jason, thanks again. And... I think maybe that was it. I don't know. The chat's moving so fast and I'm listening to you too. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's, so that's it. That's what got you started. How much did you get those for, by the way, when you first started out? Uh, well, or, like 200 the bucks. Fighter and the, yeah, the Street Fighter and the Mortal Kombat, they, uh, I think, I know Melissa bought the Street Fighter. She paid the 299 because mm-hmm. I think it was 299 and I paid two ninety nine for the Mortal Kombat, and then I went and I also picked up two risers because remember they were selling the risers separately then. Mm-hmm. So I was paying full price for them. Like I thought it was okay for three hundred bucks. You know what I mean? So I didn't I didn't see the problem with it. Yeah. Um, later on, as as the longer you're in the hobby, all of a sudden you started uh, scratching, looking around for deals. Right? I bought plenty of used ones, mm-hmm. uh, cheap and and. Then uh, eventually, uh, one thing. Oh yeah, before I started doing the YouTube stuff, I started selling the ETA Prime mod. I would do the Raspberry Pi mod, and I would post those cabinets for sale on Facebook. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Um, but man, Facebook Marketplace is a, is a real nightmare. <laughs> that's what I've heard. I've never used it, it's, but I, that's what I hear. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually more prone to using OfferUp now. OfferUp, I notice people on OfferUp aren't as crazy. Yeah, you, know, you get a lot of weirdos message you on Facebook. Hey, man, uh, are you open to trades? I got like this uh, bag of old rags that are covered in oil. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like- yeah, yeah. I, dude, it's funny because that happens sometimes <laughs> on um, on offer up for me, but it's it's very, very rare, very few and far in between. And I usually put like, yeah. don't bother me unless you're serious. Like I'm not, you know what I mean? Uh, Kevin Clausen with a super chat. It's Darkwing Dubs. Seven months till October. Um, Appreciate the $2 super chat. Thank you for that. And uh, Thumper Squid, I would be remiss if I didn't say hello to you um, because somehow you always manage to sneak by. Uh, Chris Harris, hi, hi, hi. Um, But yeah. Uh, Wait, what what were we talking about? Uh, We were talking about how much we spent on these arcades. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure I didn't like totally lose track. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I was going to say, I, 
got um one of the first ones that i got was the asteroid well it was street fighter and then the asteroids one because i got the asteroids one for a hundred bucks from walmart with battlefront on xbox and it was like a package deal thing and i was like i can't pass that up it was battlefront mm -hmm. 2 and uh so i went went ahead and bought that and ended up modding um that because you know it was so cheap but i when i started looking at the cost of you know a cabinet and then the cost of the mods which the total ended up roughly around like 500 bucks right if you like started adding like a lit marquee and buttons and all this other stuff i mean you end up paying total for one cabinet around 500 bucks maybe even 600 bucks um depending on what you do to it and uh and that's when you know they started slowly kind of changing i think marvel versus capcom was the next one that came out that i was like oh cool like this is this is an improvement and then tron was like a big deal for me because that's when they really started actually mm -hmm. trying to mimic the form factor of you know the arcades and it was a taller one and, and stuff like that but um i think i got like a little bit I just got really curious like I wanted to see you know where they were going with it and I was getting more and it was fun to have like your own little arcade at home yeah um and it still is uh oh yeah you know when I oh, have yeah. when I have guests over they love playing um in the game room so that's always fun but anyways yeah and then you know but you have to offload the old ones and so it was like kind of like a juggling game and um but now, yeah, where their prices are at now, it's it's very interesting because you can see that the market's changing, which I guess kind of brings us into, I'm curious about what your thoughts are about the current state of home arcade and not necessarily just our community, but like what is going on with these companies and sure. where where do you think that, you know, the this is potentially leading? Um, I think that, uh, you've already seen it happening over the last year and a half. I think they used COVID as an excuse. And when it comes to increase in labor and costs and parts during COVID and that caused some massive price jumps, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and then some people are like, oh, well, now we got to spend all this money to build these things. So the, that cost passes on to us as the customers, like, that 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 excuse only lasted for so long. I mean, prices on materials and wood came back down pretty quickly and stuff, and yet the prices on these products kept going up, right? They kept going up. It just seems to me that uh, a lot of people who got into this hobby looking to spend anywhere between $75 to $300 the most on this hobby, I think a lot of those people just simply are getting phased out because of the cost of these machines nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. Um Nowadays, it's becoming more of a premium buyer's market, you know what I mean? Like people who have more disposable income, you know, who don't really care. Like they'll be like, you know what, today I'm going to spend 600 bucks and buy Time Crisis. You know what I mean? Like it's become, it seems like it, the, the customer is changing, right? Versus it used to be anyone can buy these and now it's tougher for anyone to buy these because of the higher prices, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of that, too, is driven by the fact that for years we've asked for these products to be built better, run better, more premium features on them. So some of our feedback has also helped it turn into this. But it's definitely not a, a, a product that used to be for everybody. Right. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you that everybody can buy these products because not everybody can just go today and go spend five, six, seven hundred bucks on a home arcade machine mm -hmm. versus back in the day you could be picking these up for 100 150 bucks you know what i mean like you know it's it so i think that you know the customer has changed but um when it comes to the companies too i think arcade one up just built way too many arcade cabinets and now and uh, they made some bad decisions on some games that they released and they had a several games that didn't perform the way they were hoping they would. And that led to all the changes we saw in the company. What are they going to be moving forward? I think they're just going to be a company that waits for a retailer or a publisher to reach out to them 
and say, hey, it'd be really cool if you made like an X-Men 97 cab. We got a TV show coming out, right? And they fund the project and they help build it. Like, I actually think like Michael B is telling the truth when he tells that story uh-huh. uh, to me. Whereas back in the day, they would they would be presenting to like the retailers like, hey, man, we want to build this. Can we get your sign off? Right. We have the money. Because right. remember, Arcade One Up got all that seed money, so they had money. Yeah, and they and they were getting. Um, I know on some of the, at least some of the cabs, they right. were meeting or going over exceeding minimum guarantee, um, which was what kept uh, you know right. a lot of the retailers like Best Buy and Walmart in on kind of I think uh, yeah. the buy-in for their their cabs. We got a nine ninety nine super chat from Giovanni Sean. My first nice. one up cabinet mod was DDLC. What is DDLC? Uh, <laughs> what dance is it? Dance dance. My first. Dan- Giovanni does all the dance dance revolution. Oh, stuff. okay, 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 okay. So, yeah. um, and then my second was the music game called Pump It Up. Oh, I've heard of Pump It Up. Yeah. From there, my complaints about no home arcade music games became my hobby. I still yeah. do to this day like DDR one ups. Oh, that's cool. I, I did. Do you have like a channel? Because I, I would like to check out those mods. I actually have. Oh yeah, he does. He I does. Actually, I actually have an L Tech dance pad that I'm I'm gonna do a video on, um, at some point here in yeah. the next month or so. Um, but yeah. that was that was one that I always thought would be cool. You know who else is is maybe working on something like that? Is Retro Lizard might be working on a DDR. Type cab because you know he does. I love Hero. Retro Lizard. I yeah. love Retro Lizard. Um, Michael B is lurking. What's up, yeah. Mike? You lurker. What's up, Mike? You silly lurker. Uh, yeah, his spidey sense was tingling. That's funny. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it seems like Arcade One is gonna be the kind of company that just sits around and waits for someone to reach out to them and say, "Hey, we'd love for you to make this machine for us," right? Like. You know, and if, and if that doesn't happen, then nothing's coming out. You know so. what I thought was kind of like a slap in the face was that they, um, when they re-released X-Men, ni- or when they released X-Men 97, they re-released the same PCBA in it that everybody knows can't run MVC2 online correctly with rollback. And I'm like, why would you do that? Why, like, if you're going to re-release it, you would you would have thought, like, okay, then they would at least upgrade the PCBA. Um, I mean, if they have the, if they have the, uh, the, oh, my God, the resources to update the artwork and reprint the cabinets, then why not, in a deluxe format, then why not also upgrade the PCBA, right? Right? No, yeah, that makes sense. But obviously all they had was a bucket of spare parts. That's why it's I call it the spare parts, <laughs> the spare parts arcade. Uh, wah, wah. I know, um, I mean, I, there are a lot. Of, dude, they sold a lot of them. Well, I mean, not a lot of them, but like. Yeah, they I sold totally them quick. For, I, I totally forgot on Amazon. When Amazon has a product listed for sale, you can see how many sold. Right. And I didn't know. And 19K Fox pointed that out on uh-huh. one of his live streams. And. If you go take a look, they've sold over a thousand X Men ninety seven. Yeah, yeah. So there are obvious there are people. I interested. knew that they were gonna sell good. I didn't have yeah. see, I didn't have a question about that. Yeah. But as far as from an enthusiast point of view, it's like, well, that's trash that you did that. But the thing is, like they're I they're, wouldn't buy one. Their their overall like market um like net, you know, I mean it, it goes around the world. So it's like these, you know, the the sales that yeah. they're making on these things, it's not just constrained to like the U.S. only or something like that. And X-Men is like a thing. So, you know, if fans of it see that, they're not thinking like, hey, that's not an HS5 or that's not a Midway cab. Like, they don't give a shit. They're just like, oh, cool. It's got the X-Men artwork and it's got the fighting games with the Marvel characters on it. Like, yeah, you know, the, none of these people who Arcade One Up really appeals to now are hardcore enthusiasts, and that's how they want it because they've got people like Cyrus, who represent the company. And I'm not, I'm not going to say anything bad about him. I, I'm just saying, like, you know how his personality is, and it's it doesn't appeal to enthusiasts. Everybody's like, Brr. and he's like, well, you know. So there's, there's no like. We're like, okay, dude, you don't know anything about arcades. Like, go away. And then everybody else is like, oh, he's so nice. Let's buy the X-Men 97 cab. (laughs) 
Yeah, I mean, obviously there were some people in it. Like, I remember every time we did a live stream talking about X Men '97, and I would, I would be dogging on and calling it the spare parts cab. There'd be people in my comments section saying, "I think the artwork looks great. Plus, it's got MVC two. I'm buying it. P Dubs, you're nuts. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's fine. That it's right, all about right. opinions. Right, right, and, right. You know." Do I want Arcade 1-Up to go out of business? No, I don't want Arcade 1-Up to go out of business. I'd, li I'd like them to recover and turn or kind of reinvent themselves and mm. kind of go back to being a leader in the home arcade space. Would you call them a leader in the home arcade space today? No, I, I don't think so because they, I mean, what have they done for you lately? Um, I would no say that they're the, they're the only ones who offer or who have still, you know, uh, some of the offerings that they do have like i mean what star wars sure. is still available um yeah. you yeah. know there's there's things there's kind of like staples yeah. that they're holding on to and i think that that's like more of what they should stick to is like holding on to certain staples that they've done and improving mm -hmm. those maybe um versus trying to continue to come out with more things because i mean just the, if in my opinion, the company as a whole is not in a place where they were before, where they had more experience from the gaming industry and from mm -hmm. those time periods, you know, now they're in more of a place of like, well, let's, let's market this to everybody. Let's, let's make it appeal to everybody. And, and I think that that is one way um, that they can do that. And still, it still kind of has the appeal to enthusiasts because, you know, people who are hardcore will see things like Star Wars and be like, that's cool. Cause you're not going to find a Star Wars very easily and not for cheap. That's for sure. Like a coin ops. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I concur. I concur. Uh, let yeah. me see. Uh, chat. Am I missing anything? Are you kind of seeing it over yeah. here? Any key points that I'm well, I see what Bobby's saying. He's like, what? They're still the leader. I mean, you could call them the leader, mm -hmm. but what have they done for you lately? No firmware updates, no feature updates, except for some updates they have to deal with the app, which mm -hmm. I guess that's better than nothing. But yeah, a big, a big push for their Infinity game boards um, has been happening. And despite what a lot of people in this community think about those Infinity Game Tables, those products have actually been very successful for us. Yeah, that's like their best-selling thing, isn't it? And more and more uh, arrive, like these uh, these board game people love them. So the board game community apparently enjoy them. I mean, mm -hmm. casuals. I just don't know how they could still sell that thing for nine hundred bucks. It's it's like two. It's almost three years old and. Yeah, it's that's three, crazy. It, the, the technology is so outdated. Like, how has it still got a retail of like 900 bucks for the 32 inch? But then again, they have the smaller one now, which is still is overpriced in my opinion. But I, I agree. Yeah. I, agree. I mean, I mean, we're coming out with X-Men 97. We're going to get a golden T deluxe. But I mean, until until we see movement like, you know, there's it's 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 like you all you hear is the sadness all you see are tumbleweeds and crickets, right? Like a lot of us miss, like we said a, a while ago, 2020 mm -hmm. when everything was popping, like we were having a good time. We were having a good time. And, and they were listening. Um, at least, uh, you know, John was kind of like the eyes and ears of the community. And so a lot of that was getting translated back. People yeah. saw the potential of when people were live streaming Arcade One Up stuff. Well, oh, let's go talk about it because, you know, they might end up making this cab. And that's how it was for a while. People were talking about things and saying they wanted things. And then that was translating, you know, to the company. But I mean, this, the, the harsh reality of it is, is that it's never, it probably like, 99% never going to be like that again. Like now it's going to be the way it is now and whatever yeah. is left of that is going to translate into something else. Cause they're going to eventually have to change their business model as far as the way that they release, you know, these games and stuff like that. I mean, that's just my, that's my opinion. Yeah. No, I, I'd like them to try and reinvent themselves a little bit mm -hmm. and, and try and make a comeback. Like you don't want to see any company go out of business, right? Like we already saw I Arcade go out of business, and it'd be a shame for Arcade One Up to go out of business too, right? Because then we'd only have Vat Games, and Vat Games only makes multicades. They're not going to make Rev. What's up? You know, 
What's up, Rev? They're not going to make, um, what do you call it? Uh, they're not going to make like these recreations like Arcade One Up, right? Like, right, right. Like, like they're going to put pretty artwork on their pinball machine. They're going to put, give you some artwork options on it's their generic, new 4K. Though. It's generic. Yeah, they're new, like the new 4K arcade machine, but, mm -hmm. you know, they're not building a, you know, pro style Killer Instinct. It's a Killer Instinct uh, multi cade you know what I mean? An and, overpriced pro style Killer Instinct. <laughs> It's going to be, and that's another thing we were talking about too. Like, where's this market going? Look at at games. Like at games, I think at games, it would be smart for at games to do what they did with their Legends arcade family products. Not only did they have the six hundred dollar arcade machine, but they had a hundred and fifty dollar control panel. They had a fifty dollar gamer puck. Uh, yeah. They had, they had a two hundred and fifty dollar gamer pro. Like, and it's all the same software, it's all the same games, just in different form factors. So if I was at games, I'm hoping that we'll, we'll see them do that with the 4K as well. You'll see a 4K Legends Core Hockey Puck to plug into your TV. You'll see a 4K Legends Gamer Pro, Legends Gamer Mini. That way, people who want to only spend or can only spend 150 250 bucks can get into the platform and then, of course, but the arcade machine, you know, it's going to be like a thousand bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, when that comes out, people are going to be like, I'm not spending a thousand dollars. Yeah, no, no. I mean, uh, and, and that's like, yeah. you know, there needs to be something entry level. That was kind of their yeah. their their uh, buckshot to arcade yeah. one up was that they had something generic that was entry yeah. level, but it, they did it good. And Joel, yeah. Joel's over here saying the company that make multi right. are the market now. And uh, I, I hear he's working on something entry level too, right, Joel? Yeah. I mean, I did streams at the beginning of the year. I said 2024 is the year of the multi-cade because you're going to see, you know, mm -hmm. the whole people people not wanting to spend $700 on a singular product, right? That, and then I have to buy another product here to have another one next to it to play a different game, and it's 600 bucks. Like, when you could spend $1,000 and you can play both games right so yeah. you know plus and then some right on a multi cade so i don't know i i unless arcade went up reinvents the wheel and comes out with something interesting uh you know uh, i think more and more people are going to be gravitating to that newbies will still be captured by the nostalgia and the aura of arcade one up like when they see these things and come across them yeah um, but I think a lot of us who've been around for a while are still going to be holding on to our wallets. I don't think we're going to be opening our wallets until we see something special. Um, cause I have no interest in buying a golden tea deluxe and I have no interest in, uh, X-Men 97. But the one thing that we talked about that actually is interesting is the modding of arcade one up yes. uh, earlier today on the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I was just about to say what the one good thing is, is that they do have, um, you know, these newer models like the Yoga Flame, the Shinku Hadouken, um, the HS5, especially because of its form factor, um, which yes. makes it particularly special, um, are really, really easy to mod. I mean, you literally just put the APK files on an SD card, stick it in the mm -hmm. SD slot, and then boom. I think all those are running on like a P71 chipset. And what's crazy is they only have like one gig of RAM on them. But I mean, those things will run up to Naomi games on them. Yeah. Uh, but though the 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 modding of the HS5, that is probably their best cabinet for an enthusiast. Because you're going to get the deluxe form factor without a riser. You get the molded coin door. It's very easy to light up. Costs you about eight bucks off Amazon. And the marquee is easily replaceable. You don't have to do anything there. Good mm -hmm. screen. I mean, 17 inch, but good screen. Yep. And the control deck actually is like the original control deck. Yeah. And the side art, you can just do yourself. The trim, you can change the color very easily. So, I mean, they are, it's, it's literally like what an HS5 was. It was a generic mm -hmm. form factor of an arcade cabinet that all the upgrade kit games were yeah. going in during the 90s. And uh, you came up with a really good idea, which I want you to pitch to everybody in the chat right now. Oh, come on. Don't, don't. It was your, it was your idea. I, I started it and then you. No. I, I stoked the fires and then you, <laughs> you, 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 you turned it into uh, Tom Hanks and Castaway. Look what I have made. I have made fire. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, can you pull up your mods that you did? Uh, are you able to do that? 
like are you able to show some little background here for the viewers here show uh, the uh okay sh- so one thing i gotta say see. is i i might actually buy one of these arcade one-up street fighter hs5 dynamo caps just for modding and you know big shout out to jade here as well as 19k fox i don't know if you guys have heard of 19k fox he's not that attractive to look at <laughs> um but he makes a decent youtube video and and the mods that you guys have come up with um you know using this as like your base i remember when i was modding when i was do, when i was modding street fighter cabinet cabinets and selling them on facebook doing the eta prime mod i'd i'd buy one of those cabinets dirt cheap i'd put a couple hundred bucks in parts in it and i'd sell it for like 6 700 bucks back then you know with a raspberry pi loaded with games and everyone would buy it so if you remember the sh- Shark Fin Street Fighter was the cabinet to mod. That was your base for modding, right? And yeah, this Dynamo, I, I don't. This Dynamo, like your 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 mods that you did. I saw your videos in 19K Fox. It's like, and that's actually getting me excited. Like I, I think I might buy one just to turn it into something. Like you know, because what I mean? it like, actually is the downsized form factor. Yeah. You know, it's proper, yeah. and the fact that you don't have to screw with the hardware is a huge 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 yeah. huge selling point you know because i mean i still have people asking me in the comments like oh did you put a raspberry pi in it like god no god yeah. no i would not ever spend I, I'm, money I'm on a raspberry so, pi again i'm so i'm so over and that's the thing too is after playing with raspberry pis for a few years like mm-hmm. I, i've been telling people on my channel i'm just so over pi mods i'm more interested in working with jamma boards working with uh uh, possibly Mr. Working with, uh, you know, um, PC mods. Like I've been having more fun doing PC mods than like messing around with raspberry Pis. Like I'm just tired of raspberry Pis. Right. And, and you know, a, a, a mini PC costs sometimes less than a raspberry Pi these days, depending on where you go. And it'll, it'll do the same thing. She's just trying to pull up the picture here. I love this. What you did right here. Let's see if you can get it on the stream. Wait, do you is this is this the one we're talking about? Oh no, those are your big blues. No, we're talking about are which, those your big blues? Yeah, those are my big blues. No, oh, the uh the other one. Which which one? No, the, the Street the, Fighter. There it is. Yeah, oh, there okay, you yeah. go. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. I loved I loved your video and I love what uh 19K Fox did on his channel with these machines. Um, you know, now this is the shark fin street fighter, in my opinion, like right. if you're going to, and th- weren't they selling these things for only like two or 300 Two ninety nine at one point. Yeah. That is a good deal. Even three yeah. ninety nine is like, okay, like I'm good with three ninety nine. There you go. Like it might, yeah, this is fantastic. Cause all you have to do is get a small graphic art for the side to cover the street fighter logo. You don't really need to put artwork on the entire control panel. You know what I mean? Like, right. Um, or I'm sorry, on the entire side panels, right? And uh, I just love what you and 19K Fox did. I think these are great mods. And I think I'm going to buy one of these just to turn it into something. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but we were talking about um, there were some HS5 shaped Neo Geo cabinets, weren't there, Jade? Oh, yeah. I have one in my garage. Right. So I was talking to Jade and I was like, you know what I'm thinking about doing? And she's like, what? I was like, I'm thinking about buying one of these taking the guts out of my Neo Geo MVSX that's behind me here and sticking it in here. That way it'd be in like a little bit larger of a form factor and stuff. And then you reminded me about the, uh, the software modding potential, mm-hmm. uh, where you could turn it into a Neo Geo just, uh, and we could just put the Neo Geo library on there just on the SD card. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, easily. And, yeah. and even like Neo Geo CD games. Oh, are we back? There we go. All right, stand by. Sorry. I think we're back. Maybe. There we go. Oh my god, dude. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I don't know. I had like an internet overload or something. I don't know what the heck happened. It's okay. Let's just not share any more windows. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, we were talking about the uh, the MVSX idea. And yeah, you can just take an SD card, pop it in there. And I'm really sorry about that yeah. chat. Um, pop it in there and then just slap the artwork on. And 
uh, you know, put a new marquee in it and you're done. Yeah. New marquee, new bezel and boom, you're done. So maybe change the button colors as you see fit. Right. Right. Well, that's, Mm. I think that would be like the one, the one weird thing you might, Mm. depending on how you want to do it. If you want to, I can't see, I can't see you on Skype. I see we're on stream together, right? Yeah, let me share my screen with you because yeah, I got to do that again. I forgot. Yeah, that way I can there. see what we got going. You good? Here. All right, now I can see everything. Okay, good. We're good back. Stuff. We're back. Sorry, our idea was so good, we broke the internet. Yeah. That's what happened. Exploded. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking picking one of those up just to mod it and turn it into something. So. Uh, I'm almost done with the 1943 mod. I got some work done on that today. So uh, hopefully my deadline is to have that done by Monday because I want to show it off on Multicade Monday. So what I can say about this hobby is this, is even though Arcade went up and some of these other companies either went out of business or just aren't giving you the products you want, and let's say you're bored with some of the products that you already have. Maybe they're collecting dust in your game room. Jade and I were talking about this. It's still fun to mod. Like it's still like, you know, blow the dust off the thing and oh i'm bored i don't want to play this uh i don't want to play this terminator 2 anymore well it only had one game on it i don't want to play it well mod it there's so many great mods there's now a soft mod for it you turn it into a different shooting cabinet you know do do the uh team encoder soft mod or do the buy stuff uh uh gaming box mod you know what i mean like yeah like i got this pac-man cab that uh packing man cabaret that i'm never gonna play again and, and now I'm turning it into something that I'll play and then I'm going to sell it. Uh, but still, like, it's fun to mod. Like, yeah. it's still fun to tinker with this shit. Like, I don't think that lost its charm. Right. I, I still love modding arcade one ups and other stuff. So, yeah. And and I and again, I think that the, uh, you know, if if you're looking for anything that arcade one up is not releasing, it's already here with the HS5. Just get an HS5. You know, snag one up yep. on sale. Wait until they're on sale. Snag yep. one or two up, and then go and just mod it. Because you're gonna, you're not paying for a Pi or a mini PC or anything like that. I mean, they're already capable yeah. of playing up to Naomi. So all you have to pay for is the LED strip to light up your coin door, um, mm-hmm. some trim, which is maybe about ten bucks, and then the cost of of your marquee. However, you want to do that. Um, and you know if you want to do the control panel as well but i I, so i have been working on uh different graphics packs where i'm finding artwork upscaling the artwork and um or making custom marquees and stuff like that and then creating one full package so for example uh i have like street fighter alpha 2 right now i have actually all the street fighter alphas and i'll pull this up right now so i can kind of show you guys what i'm talking about um that i've created or restored artwork from and i mean all this stuff you can use all this stuff on the uh on the thingamajig let me share my window here Mm -hmm. come on you can do it you can do it display capture (laughs) is that it oh maybe maybe not oh there we go oh my god Okay, so put this right here. So these are all upscaled, for example, and then I have custom marquees. So like this is a dynamo one. This could fit in a big blue or a regular dynamo. And it has the black strips because um, it's for zero to alpha. But then I also have the um, a custom one that I made for zero to alpha that has like the, the great background. Mm. And then... Um, I have all of the artwork for the panels. So, you know, your bezel artwork and all that stuff. But the point is like, I'm creating all these packages and all this stuff is going to be available on my channel. Um, Mm. So that people, why is this one still here? Is this actually, (laughs) oh, there we go. That was awesome. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, there was like i saw like 20 versions of us on the screen that yeah was hilarious it was infinite um do you have the do you have the ability to share my screen to share your screen yeah like am i able to share a screen with you and are you able to pull it up if no, you share no so. if you share it on your Skype. end if you share it on your end you can do it yeah 
Okay, let me try this. Let me know if you see. Yes, I see. What do you see? Do you see the Street Fighter Street Fighter 3? Third Strike? Yeah. All right. That's, so that's, I that's got the it. Vulix. Uh, so I I have the I have the Chulix that's orange. If okay. you remember. Yeah, so yeah. I just I just ordered and it actually arrived this week. I got the Street Fighter Three Third Strike. All this artwork here. I'm gonna put it on my Chulix. So when you mentioned uh, when you mentioned uh, Street Fighter Three, uh, you know. Street yeah. Fighter, it got me remembering this. So, this guy put it on blue. I don't think it looks as good on the blue one, but I think on my orange Chulix, I think all this because I got this whole set here, this whole kit. Yeah, I, I think all this will look pretty cool on my orange uh, Chulix. So, and I'm not even a big Street Fighter fan, but I think it'll look cool on there. So that's why I, uh, uh, so I'm gonna put it on there anyway. I think it'll look pretty cool. What do you think? That's pretty yeah, fun, that, right? Yeah, no, no, yeah, that's awesome. That's one of the things I yeah. love about the. Uh, the Vulix is that they're super versatile and very easy to like change out the artwork and stuff. Um, but I love those little marquee toppers too. Oh yeah. And that's kind of another thing. Um, just like referring back to the arcade one ups that I thought was a cool idea because those marquee toppers, if you had like a generic, um, marquee in your arcade machine, and then you have a marquee topper, it's like, and you have a lot of games you can play on there. You can just switch in and out marquee topper signs right mm -hmm. and then it kind of gives you that official feel while you're playing that game um mm -hmm. but you know i some people would i'm I'm more analog some people are probably like why don't you just get a, a freaking led marquee you dumb bitch but <laughs> i i like i like stuff like that yeah um but yeah that's cool i mean third strike on there yeah, I think it'll look pretty cool. It's a very so, uh, iconic and, and classic look, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think about doing that on mine, so that'll be kind of cool. So I can't see the screen again. Damn it. Noise. I think we've broken everything. I've I've done it. It's all my fault. Yeah. There is that. Did that fix it? Uh, all right. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're good now. All right. Oh, chat! Thank you for bearing with us, dude. Yeah. Wait, what? Why are why are why are people going to bed? It is only nine o'clock here I on know. the West Coast. What is we going got on? all night, baby. We got all night. Seriously, don't. It's leave. a Saturday night. How Saturday dare you night, guys. East Coasters. It's a Saturday night. Seriously, Stay up come late. on. You guys you are supposed got to be... shit to do tomorrow. Yeah, you're you supposed to be a... shit to getting wasted, getting wasty pants. <laughs> Every time I hear that. I think about that movie Grown Ups and that adorable little girl who goes, I want to get chocolate wasted. <laughs> when she's talking about the ice cream. Yeah, that is so cute. Uh, They're like, Mommy, what does it mean? get wasted? Oh, it means you eat ice cream. She's like, I want to get chocolate wasted. <laughs> so cute. Shotgun Sean, it's after midnight and I'm wasted. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, I've... somebody's doing it right. <laughs> there you go. There uh, you go. We got kids that get up at 7 a.m. sharp. Yeah. Dude, tell me about it. I was up until 4 a.m. writing a paper last night, and then I had to go to a soccer game in the rain and the wind this morning. Jeez. I was like, what is this, the 1950s? Um, yeah. Wait, what is... Wait, who is that? Uh, who, who's what? Brett, Brett Burner, 89. I work nights, and I'm on the East Coast. Let's do this. That's there what I'm talking go. about. Man up and stay on the stream <laughs> stop telling me good night in the live chat holy cow let's Boom. let's do this oh hey dukin's playing sea of stars i played through sea of stars i loved that game that was probably one of my favorite games of last year sea of stars i haven't played it it's good was it an, it's, it's, if, it's an rpg if you if you like like super nintendo rpgs yeah like You'll love Sea of Stars. Okay. And also there's another one called Chained Echoes. You'll like that one too. I still have um like you know what? Don't even get me started on my backlog. I, I actually have thought about doing a live stream called Backlog Gaming, like uh She Lines Backlog Gaming or something like that. Because I have such a huge backlog and I'm like, when I'm not making content, I should start streaming gameplay more so that I can catch up on my backlog. Because I have yeah, so many idea. backlog 
backlogged games and I'm like, I'll just be yeah. constant. I'll be linear. I'll play one game at a time um, and I'll just play through. But it's 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 kind of difficult for me to be consistent with that for some reason. I don't know if you watched any of my Super Mario World streams. I got so close to the end and I haven't finished yet. Yeah, I mean, typically I don't really stream live playing games too much because, you know, let's be honest, like, I, I, when I look at the numbers, people prefer to see me presenting information and talking about games and products versus actually playing them. You know what I mean? Like my, my numbers on gameplay live streams aren't that great. Like the average viewer will watch for five minutes. That's because you need to but show it, everybody your tits. We need to see more cleavage. <laughs> right. But it, so like I'll play a game for an hour and YouTube will show you the analytics and you're like, wow, I only got like 400 views and the average viewer only watched for five minutes. But if I do a podcast show and I'm presenting information to an audience, you know, I'll do an hour long show and the average viewer watches for 30 minutes. You know what I mean? And those shows do so much better. So, you know, it's kind of like I, I do them from time to time, but, I, um, you know, it's just it's a performance thing. I don't think I'm very entertaining when I play video games so like i don't think people find it entertaining like some people just have that magic you know you got guys like dr disrespect tim the tap man they will have three hundred thousand people watching them play a game right yeah they got that they know how to make that work and make it interesting and exciting like me i'm i'm just sitting there like screaming or getting mad like why do i keep dying god damn it yeah you know but that I mean? that's like, enter that's entertaining yeah Maybe, you got yeah, You got to, to. You have to find. Um, I I was yeah. listening to somebody talk about this the other day, but there's like time slots where it's like where the algorithm is basically like going up. And if you start at the at the like your if you start your time slot like 30 minutes to an hour before the algorithm starts to go like this, then and you ride it all the way through that it's like the best time slot so if you do it every day and and he was like he gets up really early to stream and they're like what are you doing up so early and he's like well i start now because this is like my feed gets into the algorithm and then more people see it and they come and like that's how i get more viewers and i was like oh that's interesting and so it even it kind of inspired me more even to be like hmm i kind yeah. of do want to want to play my backlog games what do you think chat let me know if you think i should yeah, start doing I think backlog that's... games I think that's a great way uh, to at least get the games you want to finish done. <laughs> Just start start playing them. Okay. Everyone wants me to show yeah. my tits. Yeah, Good this God. this needs. We need to make a shirt out of that now. Hashtag show tits p dubs. Show p dubs tits. P dub show us show, your tits. <laughs> how about how about <laughs> show p tits. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I stri I. I you know, it's funny, too, because when I hear, like, idiots on YouTube be like, he never plays video games. Anyone who is friends with me on any social media, like, they see me playing games all the time on on Steam. They see me playing games all the time on PlayStation. If you're friends with me on Xbox, they see me log in. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always play i play more video games than people who say they play video games a lot. I just don't live stream it. And the reason why is... Nobody watches it. You know what I mean? Like, I'd love to do it more. I got to find a way to make it interesting where people would actually want to watch it. You know what I mean? That's that's the problem. You know? I, th I think I think it's maybe, but it's like also consistency because like you have that older um, lady yeah. who she's like a grandma ish age and she plays COD. I mean, you've seen her, right? And she's like, oh. just she's beast mode in COD. And she just sits there, I, I mean, in front of the camera, and she's just yeah. like talking and playing the game, and that's it. Um, but it's it's entertaining to watch her because she's, she's good at it or whatever. Uh, but, I, you know, I mean, I don't know. Like, backlog games, I feel like it's it's a consistency thing, too. So getting yeah. some some people are saying, yeah, do it, do it, do it. Um, P-nips, yeah. some it. good names for, <laughs> for sure. It's P-nips. <laughs> Bunch of nerds. Um, but yeah, so, I, I don't know. I, but I, I, I think I'm going to do something. It's just a matter of making it happen actually. Yeah. There you go. So what's your, what's your thing on pinball right now? Like, where are you at with that? Cause that's kind of what you're working with a lot these days. Oh, I love, I'm loving pinball. So it's stuff that, and again, pinball is something that, 
again, you talk about products that not everybody can get into. I mean, if you think home arcade is niche, pinball is even more niche. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's due to the very, very high cost. I mean, it's a community of people with, let's be honest, these are people that have disposable income. You know, they have money to spend. Um, but then again, what's nice about pinball too is you technically don't need to buy a machine. You just need to go to your arcade. And if I can make some videos here and there about something pinball related that interests me and if that inspires somebody to go look for that game and play it at their arcade and throw a few bucks in the machine and, you know, that help that helps keep arcades going, right? Like in some small manner. So, yeah, you know, to me, that's what it's all about. What's funny is like I, you know, I, I, I make a couple of videos about pinball machines and people are like, why are you trying to tell us to buy pinball machines? No one's telling you to go buy a pinball. Why are you trying to tell me to, aren't you a grown man? Can't you make your own decisions? I'm just telling you about this game. If you have 10,000 to spend, go buy it. Chat, you know if, you, if you haven't done it yet, head over to P-Dub's channel right now and make sure you leave a comment blaming him for your financial yeah. decisions, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, th and see, that's the thing too, is I don't treat my audience like they're idiots. Like I, I believe that, a lot of people in this hobby are between the ages of 40 to 65. They're college educated, successful people that, you know, are pretty intelligent and can make grown up decisions for themselves. They don't need somebody to tell them what they need to do. Right. Yeah. Like, so I just put out content about stuff. So, I mean, I like pinball, but I, I want to kind of stay where I can like cover virtual pinball and real pinball, but not like only real pinball you know what i mean because i love virtual pinball well, virtual pinball's affordable for everybody right you know? right and uh, yeah that's what i was gonna say i think that's like mm -hmm. a, a good if you like doing it then that's like a yeah. good goal to set because your your audience will have uh, a lot of versatility there yeah. twisted gaming tv thank you for the 199 super chat he says tip don't try to compete with me on gta 6 content <laughs> is that oh. are you sure that's not mick did mick come in and take over uh, on oh, that man. one. Uh, uh, by the shotgun way, shotgun shot. You're a jerk. Tw uh, what did he say? He said, uh, "This is nice and all, but where are the tits? <laughs> they want to see my boobs." Um, That's hilarious. Twist Twisted Gaming has some. Um, I don't know, if, uh, dude. I I haven't been over to your um, YouTube in like a week for whatever reason, and it hasn't shown up in my feed. Um, but I do, I have been on your Instagram. I think it's because I've been on Instagram more. Um, but he's been making like some funny shorts. You guys got to check out his shorts if you haven't seen him and not the shorts he's wearing. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, I like, I like Twisted Chris. He, he makes me laugh sometimes. So yeah, but, but yeah, so yeah, I'm liking pinball. Um, you know, I bought a Venom, I bought a Labyrinth, but my goal is not to buy these new $10,000 pinball machines. I'm always on the hunt to collect 90s pinball because 90s pinball was my favorite era of pinball. Those were a lot of the pinball games that we played in our in the arcades when we were younger, right? And dreamed one day we would have these in our homes. Like, wouldn't it be cool if we could buy this and take it home with us? So my goal is to find a lot of classic 90s pinball. Hopefully I could pick up a couple this year. I'd like to get at least two. Um, and what's great about that is these are incredible pinball games that have DMDs. They're solid state. You know what I mean? They're fun. They have toys on the tables, mechs. Like 90s pinball was awesome. It just didn't have an LCD screen. They just had the the dot matrix display. Yeah. But that doesn't make, make the bad games, incredible themes, incredible movies, incredible TV shows that these are based off of. And... A lot of these games you can get for, you know, three thousand to five thousand dollars, which is a lot of money. But yeah, it's but not it, like you're spending ten, fifteen thousand. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like so like the amount of money I spent on Labyrinth and Venom, I could have probably got four used pinball machines. And even if they needed a repair, I could have learned how to repair them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like I want to I want to get a couple more 90s pins. They always pop up from time to time in my area for sale. And that would be really cool. Hopefully I can make that happen. It's definitely an an enthusiast um hobby and like I didn't I got a V yeah. I have a yeah. V pin from one up and I you know I don't know if you've heard me tell that story but I I got it for really cheap cuz I'm like I don't want to pay a lot of money. 
for one of those, I would rather put like that kind of money towards an actual pinball machine. And Labyrinth is kind of the one that I have my eye on. Um, but oh God, man, like barrels of fun. How much, how much is that thing? It's like 12 grand, isn't it? Or something. No, no, it's a uh, 10,600. But like shipped with, ta with tax and shipped and everything. It's, it's closer to 12 or it's something like that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's up there. Yeah. But anyways, that's yeah, that's yeah. an awesome machine. But I would only want to have like one. You know, I only I don't really have like the space to have a ton of pinball machines. So I, I just kinda wanna have like one good right. one. And I figure that's the nice thing about V pin for me and who's not really experienced with, with pinballs, uh, is that you can, you know, play a bunch of different pinball games on it, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I like about virtual pinball because there's some pinball games that I will never ever buy, never ever find, never ever own, and you can play them at home thanks to like the VPX community or you know even thanks to Zen Studios. They've made a lot of old Williams tables now. Like virtual pinball's fun. There's some people who like they only like real pinball. They don't like virtual, and one of those people is my wife. She. Mm -hmm hates virtual pinball she oh, really? hates video game pinball she she only wants to play real pinball um she's got this horrid thing where she just hates it she thinks it's stupid and silly versus playing the real thing me i i like both like just just like i like real arcades and i like uh, the home arcades right like i have primal rage i have cubert i have cruising world i have real arcade machines but i also have at games i arcade what up like i got all this shit in my house right like i i don't pick a side you know like right. if it's fun to play i'm gonna spend my money on it yeah does that make sense yeah no i mean i agree if you like it like i'm not going to yeah. i'm not going to wall myself off from you know all these other options and and yeah. i you know it's like we were saying like arcade one-ups are if you find a form factor that's fitting for you it they're great you know because you can mod them and you can work on them and ideally the ideal situation for me with that is that you're not spending yeah. a ton of extra money especially and where they're at now it's easier to do yeah. that um but then yeah i mean i have you know coin ops and i have um i have my one v pin and then i have uh my multicade so my multicade is, yeah. is freaking awesome i love that thing um and is that the one you got from game room solutions yeah, so the 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 finish quality of it was was not the greatest. Um and there's there's some things that I don't like about their cabs just as far as the finished product, but I'm enough of a hobbyist that I can do it like I can finish it off myself without spending any extra money if that makes sense. Um all right. So it's it's just a shell. Like that's all I want from them is just the shell. And um yeah, so it worked out good though, because it's it's a good form factor for me. You can sit, and that's another thing too. Like I feel like people our age forget is they used. I I remember hearing a lot of people say like, "Oh, arcade one ups are so small, you can't like even stand there. You have to sit." And I'm like, "Well, good, because I wanna, I wanna <laughs> sit when I play arcade games now. I don't want to stand there, you know, trying to beat a game that you takes know, 45 minutes to beat." When I uh when I first started covering this stuff back in like 2019, 2018. I made a lot of videos saying I don't want an arcade one up to put a stool with my arcade. You know how they would include a stool and jack up the price a hundred bucks. Mm. Uh, any combo bundle that had a stool was a hundred dollars more than like one without. And I wanted to stand and play, but here we are four or five years later. And all of a sudden Jade, I don't want to stand anymore. Like I like my sit down candy cab. Like I just, I don't mind sitting the, down. The Japanese, like, they had it right with the candy cabs. I mean, everybody <laughs> was doing it. Every, everybody was sitting down, you know, what? and they probably have better backs because of it. So, yeah. Like even uh, downstairs by the pinball machines, I have a stool. So if I feel like banging out, like I'm going to play Venom for 30 minutes, I'm going to sit in a stool and play versus standing. Yes. And yeah. You know, it's just maybe it's because maybe I'm just old and fat. I don't know, but <laughs> I don't. I four years ago I wanted to stand. Now I want to sit. Isn't it funny how we change over yeah. time? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's but that's it's like it's almost like it's common sense when you think about it, though. Like, why would you want to stand 
you know, at a, at yeah. this thing for 45 minutes to an hour playing a yeah. game when you could be sitting. And candy cabs were the way. I mean, Japan, that's all they had was yeah. just candy cabs. And that's what everybody was doing was sitting. Yeah. And it's like, well, I guess that actually kind of makes sense. And so um, I, I think every single arcade that I own has a stool in front of it. Um, whether it's coin up or arcade one up and, and, uh, I like it. I like it like that. I'm, I'm good with that now. Um, Paul says, yeah. Paul says, I won't play any game without my fatigue, Matt. Uh, <laughs> a fatigue, Matt. Is uh, he talking about that? Oh man. The, buy or, or the anti, Matt. what was it? Was it a fatigue, Matt? Anti-fatigue, Matt? Yeah, I don't know. It was, a, I did, yeah, I did, a, a, I did a really, one. I did a really great segment yeah. about that in my killer instinct video. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, you know, it's just way more comfortable to sit. So I'm all about that life I, that sitting. I, I really wish people made some funny videos about that fatigue, Matt. I want to see somebody like approaching their arcade cabinet and they're all exhausted and tired. But the minute they step on the anti fatigue mat, they pop yeah. awake and they start playing the game. Like <laughs> that would have been great. Yeah. That would have been cool. I like it. I like mm -hmm. the idea. You just pitched it to me. I think I actually, did I end up giving my, my anti fatigue mat away when I sold my KI? I sold my KI pro to someone and I think I still have like the Jago tin that came with it, but I think I might have given away the anti fatigue mat for shame. I'm just, I'm just having a moment of dis disappointment right now. Should have kept it. Just go. <laughs> <My> <laughs> we have one in front of the sink in our kitchen. I'll just go oh, steal really? that one. Yeah. Just draw like yeah, a, you ever just have, draw like, like a picture of your favorite arcade character on there. Yeah, just I'll put a sticker on it, like yeah. a Hubert sticker in the center. There you go. You know what I mean? Yeah. My wife's gonna go in. She'll be like, "Where's that mat? Where'd it go? It's oh in the arcade, my God. honey. Sorry, I was tired." We need, you know what? Arcade One Up should change that part of their business model. We now sell anti fatigue mats with the to match your your One Up separately. I'll roll yeah. them out. It'll be an anti fatigue mat party up in this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I remember back in the day they used to do different stuff like wall decorations and uh, and all that. They did plushies and things, and that all kind of phased out. Yeah, so. yeah. It, Why it, not? I know. I know. Michael B's waiting on them to still make arcade one up T shirts with just like the normal arcade one up logo on them. I know he would be all over it. Yeah, I know he'd be those. So, oh man, that reminds me. Oh, I meant you know what? I just remembered. I because I have an arcade one up hat that um Ezekiel sent me, and I. I oh yeah, yeah. I need to wear it um because I haven't worn it yet. Yeah, Ezekiel's a really good guy. Like every YouTuber he meets, he gives them those arcade one up hats and hoodies. So he gave me the hoodie. He gave me the hat. So dude, he, he... I wore I wore the hat a lot. But I wore it backwards, and nobody knew it was an arcade one up hat because <laughs> I had to wear my hat to the back. You I, you wore it during the, the time of uh of you know uh what was it the witch hunt when everybody was being called a shill. Do you remember that time? There was like a time where just if you even uttered the word arcade one up in a positive manner, it was like every comp like every other comment in your video would be your shill. Air shell, you work for one up. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. There was like a, a witch hunt time in yeah. in the uh, in the arcade well, one up community. That, Is it still that like still that? Goes on. I saw. Really? I well, no. I think I think some people grew some intelligence, but like, like for instance, um, someone on Paul on Reddit, uh, he shared he shared a post about me on Reddit on the arcade one up Reddit recently. He's like. P Dubs messaged Travis saying, "Hey Travis, is your company dead?" And Travis said, "No." Like he shared that on Reddit, right? Uh -huh. And I, I looked through the comments, and there was like this one clown who was all like, "Oh, this guy, you know, he just he works for One Up, or he or he says he doesn't work for One Up. You just can't trust this guy. You know Dude, what I mean? He like he's there's he's in always, a cult. There's always some and Jedi." Like, who knows who uses the force and they know everything about us. Okay. There's always a Jedi. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. I'm like, let me see here. 
<laughs> in five years, never once have I worked for Arcade What Up, but in five years, I've only ever received one product for review, and I gave it a bad review. I shit all over it, right? Like, yeah. that doesn't really sound like the actions of of an employee. So, you know, I, that, I actually that, didn't that think I was going to be able to give um, yeah. my one product a good review, and I actually ended up liking it. Well, Let's be honest. I mean, uh, they've released what a hundred, two hundred SKUs over the last years. There's a few good ones in there. Tron, Star Wars. You know what I mean? Like, well, minus the Tron stick breaking, uh, but you know what I mean. Like, there's there've been some good ones. You know, Marvel. The Marvel Superheroes Limited Edition was a fantastic arcade machine. The Final Fight was a fantastic arcade machine. Right? Yeah. Like, there've been plenty that have been decent, and then there's been plenty that have had maybe one issue that the community hyper fixates on and makes that the entire story of the machine. Right. And then it, the people get mad and, but then there are some machines or products they've released that have just been total crap. Right. So oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all over the, it's all over the spectrum with them. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and that's the thing. Like, I think a lot of the ones that I've really appreciated were probably from Tron you know, so like Tron, their Star Wars re-release, um, and Dragon Slayer, uh, a lot of the 80s ones that had really unique form factors and they kind of kept true to that uh, are the ones that I appreciate the most. And, um, and then I had Mod What Up send me a control deck for my Star Wars, so that made it even better. And then I got the little plastic molding. I'm like, it's really a mini Star Wars now. Um, and then my Dragon's Lair, I also got their wood uh, waterfall control deck. And, and so anyways, but I, I really like those 80s ones. And um, I have the Miss Pac-Man cocktail as well. And those, those are kind of like token ones, you know, for me. And then I think the Multicade kind of covers most of everything else. And then I have like Donkey Kong, which is totally one that I, I will never let go of Donkey Kong. Like the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, I I might, you know. Um yeah. I'm trying to get rid of some of my stuff right now, but I think I would keep Hubert and Super Mario Brothers pinball and everything else can be sacrificed. Everything else can go up in flames and I'll cash the insurance check in the morning. You know what I mean? Yeah, like Yeah. But if the you, house you was on fire, you would use that analogy, the insurance analogy. Yeah. If yeah, if the house was on fire, I'd get my wife and my dog and my you know, my wife, my son, my dogs out, and then I would grab my pinball cart, wheel out Mario, grab my trolley, wheel out Cuber, and then be like, "Let the rest go." Yeah, I have insurance. I have insurance. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, my so. Donkey Kong was already in a house fire, so I think it's good luck. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, I, it survived a house fire. So I'm like, this thing is good luck, man. Um, oh, but you restored it. Yeah, so I restored it. Yeah. But, but, um, yeah. but it was fully working still. Like the screen was good. Yeah. The board was good. And so that was like a sign to me like, oh, this thing's a survivor. It's like me. Come on, let's be friends. Um, but yeah, I, I love that cab. And, and it's the same year I was born. So it was yeah. made, released. Blastroids, Paul, yes. Um, Blastroids is a great game. The sequel, yes, the agree. official sequel to Asteroids. I have number 498 of 2000. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah that's it, a good one. I can't, I still was like, uh, I really think that that's one of the games that I, I don't understand why Arcade One Up <laughs> never included it in, the, in their releases. Did what? you see what Star Dutch just put the chat? If my house is on fire, I'd go down with the shit. I'm not <laughs> leaving these cabs. Yes, you would. You'd let your whole arcade one up collection turn into toast. Come on, man. <laughs> That's dedication right there. Yeah, I'm going down with the shit. We're all going oh, to man. heaven together, guys. Yeah, so I I'd like to pick up a couple 90s pins. Obviously, I got the Polycade coming. I got the Unico Nova Blast coming. Um, I'll probably pick up a couple arcade one ups to mod during the year. But um, yeah, I mean, but it, when it comes to real arcades, like I think like if I 
I could buy one tomorrow. If I could find one tomorrow and buy it, it would be a Mad Planets because I want to put it next to Cubert. I think Mad Planets is a fantastic. Have you ever played Mad Planets before? Yes. I do you like it? I think it's a cool game. It's not like my favorite, but it's a cool game. That's fine. I appreciate. Fine. I appreciate. You're a the, I get it. No, 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 no. I appreciate the nostalgia of it. I really do. Um, it's yeah. it's like that. I think. Um, I think. I think the two for me would be like Blaster and Discs of Tron. Upright would yeah. be the two that if I could if I could buy I would or if I could find I would buy those. I'm telling you, I'm actually worried that because the more I play it, the more I fall in love with it. Is the Kangaroo arcade game? I might I might go try and find a Kangaroo out there in the wild. Be like, does anyone have a Kangaroo they'll sell me? You know what I have do. Have you played Kangaroo? I if have. You like Donkey Kong. I have my cabinet that my Tekken cabinet is a kangaroo cabinet. No shit. Yeah. It's an actual ser like serialized kangaroo cabinet. You would have to replace the side art and, you know, the, the control. But it's overall, I mean, like, it, it wouldn't be hard to do. Ooh. So it is. It, and don't, I'm, don't tempt me. Don't well, tell me. I'm I'm selling it right now. So, but the monitor in it is is upgraded. It's a Sony Trinitron. However, I do have... Uh, another CRT. So, if, I mean, if you think about it and you get interested, let me know. But, I mean, you'd have to put new artwork and find a kangaroo board and stuff like that. Oh, artwork's easy. Yeah. Finding a working kangaroo board, that'll be a little bit harder, but nah. not impossible. Nah, not it, impossible. it wasn't like a rare game, kangaroo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I love kangaroo. I, I, I really hope, um, like, Numbskull or New Wave Toys make a kangaroo. I think that'd be kind of cool to have, like, a little one. Mm -hmm. Like if I know if I can't get a big one, at least give me the little one to stick on a shelf somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, have you guys played Kangaroo? Kangaroo is a fun goddamn game. It you is. guys got to play. It. You're 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 hopping along, and you're a kangaroo with a boxing glove, and these monkeys are throwing stuff at you, or they charge you, and you get to punch them in the face. It's like Donkey Kong, but you're a kangaroo with a boxing glove. It's hilarious. I was right. sad that um, it's awesome. It only came out on well, twenty six hundred, which I didn't like the twenty six hundred version, but yeah. um, the fifty, God, what is it, fifty six or fifty eight? Mm -hmm. No, fifty eight hundred, right? Um, I, that's always the in between, or I forget because part of the eight bit family, it's kind of like a, an Atari eight hundred. But anyways, um, yeah. So, but my twenty six hundred plus can't play fifty eight hundred games. It only does twenty six hundred and seventy. God, I don't know, 7,800. I'm so brain screwed right now. But um, I have an Atari 800 that I can play Kangaroo on. And um, I was actually playing it on my Atari 800 recently. And I'm like, this game is kind of fun. And I actually thought for a minute about um, turning my Tekken cab back into a Kangaroo cab. And then I was like, no, too much work. Uh, you know what? You should do that. And when you're done, just ship oh, it to me and oh, I'll okay. take it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, do yeah. all the hard work. Okay. You do all the hard work. I just want to own it. <laughs> okay. I'll do it. I'm dead serious. I'll turn it into a kangaroo cab for you if you swear to buy it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'll trade you. Do, do you take trades? No, I got a, a no. bucket of dirty rags. This is here. not I'll Facebook trade. Marketplace, sir. <laughs> yeah, Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> do you do trades? I got all these magazines. Like, have you seen these messages people will uh, send you? Dude, I don't, I'm like, not even, the funny thing is I have yeah. a Facebook, um, Sheline Gaming that I don't even, go, I haven't been on there in probably a year, but I see like yeah. that I'm getting emails with like, you have this many messages. I'm like, oh, well, um, I yeah. can't do Facebook. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't like to respond to that stuff. Like uh, anytime you go to like Instagram or Facebook and they're like, you have a message request. Like I usually never read those. So no offense to anyone out there, but yeah. any, anytime I tried reading those, it was always some scam or something really creepy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, but, um, but yeah, I mean, let me, let me know because I, I will do that. I could probably source that stuff or, or we could work something out because I'm trying to get rid of it. I'm trying to sell that cabinet anyways. Um, so just food, food, <laughs> would you take an thought. entire collection of readers digest magazines? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's the kind of shit you get when you sell stuff on Facebook marketplace. It's ridiculous. Dude, that's crazy. 
I have a cheese grater from 1950. It's nostalgic. Which is, <laughs> can I trade? Can I trade? You want it? Oh, uh, my God. Man. That's terrible. Uh, are you going to go to any expos this year? Are you going to go to any conventions? No, dude. I'm afraid I'm going to get murdered. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I asked you that once. I was like, are you going to go to any expos? You're like, no, I'm going to get stabbed. I was yeah. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, dude. I, I'm like, I'm like, no way, man. I'm too, I'm way too finicky for that. Nah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go uh, to a couple. So we'll see. Yeah, that's cool. We'll I, I, I thought about going to um, SoCal Gaming Expo. Um, yep. That would be one that I would consider going to. Uh, it's just that they don't let you, you know, pack heat. So I'm like, I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> no guns allowed in the building. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I thought about it. So so I don't know if I can find if I can find like a good enough support group, I might um, I might go to that one. Everyone's making fun of me in your chat. Thanks so much, guys. I love you too. Especially, hey, how about a big shout out? How many of you guys are on the East Coast? Put a one in the chat. I want to know. Because we have like 70 some people here this late at night. I would love to know how many people are on the East Coast who watch this late. It's yeah, only 10 o'clock here. Dedication. Like, when I hang up with you, I'm going to go back to modding that 1943. I'm not how tired. Many, how I, many I viewers get... do we have right now? Uh, I think you have about 70, something like that. It's 70? Wow. Yeah, something like that. That's. Hey, guys, yeah. thanks. Wow. I thought, and we I got thought we were gonna Jason's say like on the East Coast. Fret Burner, J Pill, he's on the East Coast. Kevin's in the Midwest. Jason. Well, then we, know, put we know we're doing something team. right here. I mean, talking I, about I, your like, nipples seems to be keeping everybody afloat. So, hey, when we started talking about my nipples, the uh, the audience went up to ninety. So just a heads <laughs> up there. So, but yeah, uh, but it's up to you. It's your show. How many of those were, tr were troll accounts, though? That's the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a survivor. Wait, what what do you what did you what do you mean about my show? What? Oh, like uh whatever you want to talk about next. Oh, oh, oh. I thought we were talking about your nipples. No, we I can't. P Dub said he he told me that his his last trick before we sign off tonight is gonna be to squirt milk out of his nipples onto the Oh that's <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> You know, I already have to deal with Michael B every week. Now I got to deal with you too. Oh man, that's terrible. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, no, that's okay. That's not going to happen. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, but yeah, yeah, my milkshakes will not bring all the boys to the yard. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Uh, we got about. I I think we got about like nine minutes left, and then we'll we'll kind of wrap it up. But I mean, any finishing thoughts? Okay. Uh, what what do you? So you're you're doing your mod on your. 1941 right now right 1943 or 1943 sorry um because i just saw a 1945 uh hs5 and i almost sent a picture of it to you um today because it had like artwork it was like decked out i was like oh that's crazy but anyway so well, maybe i'll maybe i'll do that when i get one of these uh dynamos maybe i'll do that mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah, because I'm not going to keep this. I mean, I'm going to play it a little bit, and but then I'm going to sell it, the cabaret, the 1943 cabaret. That's kind of the fun thing about modding, though, yeah. is like sometimes you just want to do it. Just yeah, cheerily for the fact of like doing it and making it look cool and different. But the the cabaret, are you doing on the sides? Are you like putting the wood vinyl over it, the wood grain vinyl over it? Well, the Pac-Man uh, Cabaret or Pac, is it Pac and Pal? Whichever, whichever one yeah, it was yeah, that I it so. came with, it was it was already uh, the wood. It's already the. But wood it has trend. the Pac-Man graphics on it, doesn't it? On the side, right? So all I had to do was buy the 1943 medallion, oh, okay, kind of okay, like okay. the HS5 mod you guys did, and right. all I had to do was co cover it. Oh, boom! So I covered I covered it with the uh, 1943 medallion side art because that's. All all the 1943 art is on the side is just that one sticker mm -hmm. covered the pac-man logo and the rest of the side panel still would trim it looks beautiful yeah so yeah i put the marquee on i put the bezel on um i have all the guts in there i just got a few odds and ends i Ooh, gotta I'm, wrap i'm up, excited but... i'm excited to see that wait what do you mean guts oh like the hardware like all what i'm 
putting in it because the machine's been gutted. So, you know, I had to put in, you know, what's running the game inside there, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So it's not, so, it's not the original hardware. No, no, all the arcade one up stuff got taken out. This oh, is an okay. arcade one up. It's not? No, this is an arcade oh, it one is. up. Okay, that, okay. That's been modded into. I'm sorry, I was just thinking because we were talking about milky nipples. I was like, you should get a hat that <laughs> says got milk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Innards. The innards. Yeah. I'm excited about it because, you know, um, I haven't done any mods like the last mod i did was a few months ago i did my capcom dungeons and dragons arcade one up that i did a that was a pc mod it's running a two terabyte batacera drive and uh i think that's beautiful i'm gonna keep that one uh, -huh. uh this one is just like i've never seen anyone really mod an arcade one up cabaret so i figured no, it's a cool I'm project like, i'm like i just want to do it and then be done with it and get rid of it you know what i mean like i just pass it off to someone who's actually gonna like keep it i'm pissed that i missed out on those when they went on sale um i didn't see until yeah. they were sold out because i would have picked one up because i think they were like 199 or 149 weren't they like they were yeah i got it, it was cheap it was whenever like i picked this dirt cheap when they when they yeah. cleared them out and then the big blues just went on sale at best buy they were 115 yeah. bucks and they sold out like that i mean and the thing about those is they come with the stool and everything i mean like so you're getting a full package for 115 bucks that's not bad with free shipping yeah um but you already have two big blue mods you've done do you really want to do a third or do you want to do it just to like you know pass just it on to, to do it else? just to do it and then i'd sell it yeah i like i like working yeah. on the big blues um because i do the gen 2 mod on them and and they look really cool yeah. So, but yeah, I, if I, if I got more, it would be just to mod it and cause it's fun content and I like modding. I like working with my hands and then I'd eventually sell it. Yeah. Has anyone confirmed to actually get one at that price? I haven't chat. Did any of you pick up a big blue from Best Buy for the clearance price of like 120 or 115? Well, it's that's what they did with the the Mar or, or attack on Mars is they cleared them out for like one fifty, which was wow. In, yeah, that that's insane. I mean, so when they when they go on clearance, I mean, they're done. They're gone like quick. And this is with Best Buy. Mm hmm. Yeah. Crazy. They're fun to mod, so if you can get them really cheap and then mod them, I mean, that's a good thing. It's it's kind of hard to say I'm going to spend 500 on it just to mod it, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah, like, no, no, no. Because mm -mm. by, by the time you mod it, you're at like, okay, now i got to put $200 worth of parts in here. Now I'm at 700 Now I'm at 800 It's a lot. You know what? Um, uh, Just to, like, share with everybody here and you, <clears throat> there is a guy on OfferUp, and I can send you the link who mm -hmm. sells PCBAs for Arcade 1UP, and he has, like, just hordes of them. Um, mm -hmm. And I got I got a Yoga Flame PCBA from him for 40 bucks. And, I mean, so, I mean, that's a good price, like, just for the PCBA, um, and it comes with the connections and everything. Um, but he has, like, every PCBA. So many of them. I'm, I didn't even ask how he gets them, but he's got, like, his own legit store and stuff. Um, but it's a good, anyways, my point is there are a lot of the PCBAs that they have, like the Yoga Flame, that you can just stick an SD card in and then soft mod it. So it's a really cheap way to have original hardware that connects to the, um, the controller board and then just soft mod it. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. N nice and cheap. There's cost effective ways to mod. Yeah. So obviously not having to replace um, encoder boards and stuff like that just makes it that much easier and cheaper. True. True. So yeah. Wait, so did anybody, nobody got a, a big blue Nobody deal? did. Nobody wow. did. It was a myth. It was a rogue sale. A rogue sale. Yeah, dude. Somebody... And, you know, there was people who got the attack from Mars for 150. I think I paid 180 for mine because the guy who got it was had mm. had gotten it on the clearance. He had like a couple of them. Mm. But yeah, I didn't want to pay more than that. So it was a good deal. 
anyways all right any last minute uh things you want to you want to share with us any surprises aside sure. from your mod wait when are you releasing your mod video uh i'm hoping to have it out on monday so monday uh yeah hopefully monday so yeah I promised everyone I would get it done because I've been talking about it for weeks and I haven't gotten it done. I've been a lazy shit. So, um, yeah. So we're going to get that done on mon Monday. And then also next week on Tuesday, I uh, will be interviewing uh, Turner Pinball on my channel. So Turner Pinball are the makers of uh, their new um, pinball game that they just showed off at Texas uh, Pinball Festival. Uh, they're a brand new pinball company, so they're coming on the channel for an interview. So I like hearing those stories like, you know, what made you start a pinball company? You know what I mean? And yeah. we'll see, you know, we, we, I had, I interviewed Barrels of Fun. That show went really, really well. So we got Turner Pinball coming on and more lined up down the road as well. So I'll be doing a couple streams next week, Multicade Mondays. I'll be doing a special stream on Tuesday, Turner Pinball, TT titties you know what i mean <laughs> we're, since we're talking about boobs it's all about boobs <laughs> yes ninja eclipse jason so um yeah so that'll be fun we'll be talking to them on tuesday so yeah i got a lot of cool stuff coming out over the next like week week and a half so Sweet. you guys will swing up by appreciate you letting me come on guys if you came here make sure you subscribe jade's doing a good job great mod videos uh love that video you did with the with the uh, soft mod definitely guys need to check that out I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I, it was an absolute pleasure having you on. Um, you know, it's, it's always fun to like get together with people who just have like a genuine uh, passion for, for doing this kind of stuff and, and talking about it. So good vibes, still time. Very yeah. much appreciate you taking the time to, to come on and, um, sure. and talk about things. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. We ran out of time to crap on the entire community. Well, maybe next week. <laughs> <laughs> but until then to all the rest of the survivors out there <laughs> the survivors of the home arcade community we say to you thank you for joining us chat and until next time we'll see you then <laughs>